Hello everyone and Shalom, this is David Ha'ivri, your Israel tour guide. And today I am, guess, where am I? Have you subscribed? Have you checked the uh, notification button? Go ahead and do that now. Can you identify this place behind me? Okay, we are in Jerusalem, we are outside of the Jaffa Gate. We're in the Jaffa Gate Plaza, outside of the Jaffa Gate. In just a moment we are going to walk into the Jaffa Gate, but before we do that, I'm going to spin around and see, show you what we see outside of the gate, facing out. So here, we're facing to the south. You can see part of the Ottoman walls of the old city of Jerusalem, the uh, minaret at the Tower of David. You can see the other tower at the uh, uh, Dormition, Dormition Abbey in front of us. And you can see southern neighborhoods of Jerusalem. And here you can see Mishkanot Shananim and uh, Yamin Moshe, the King David Hotel, the YMCA. And uh, here, this leads up into Jaffa Road, goes west towards uh, Jaffa. And again, you can see the Ottoman walls of the old city of Jerusalem. The Ottoman walls, of course, were built 500 years ago by the Ottoman Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent. So we're going to walk over to the Jaffa Gate and note that here on this side of the gate is the ancient entrance into the gate and you can see the doors of the Jaffa Gate that were actually closed at every night until towards the end of the 19th century. So we'll walk through that gate we, in, in English and in Hebrew we call this Jaffa Gate because it's the western gate and it leads to the west to Jaffa but in Arabic it is called in Arabic it is called Bab El Khalil here's an inscription in Arabic in honor of Abraham Abraham Avinu, Abraham the father of the nation of Israel because this uh, this gate also leads to the south to Hebron it leads to the west to Jaffa and to the south to Hebron but notice here as we spin around we see a large opening just next to the Jaffa gate this is the, the Jaffa Gate that we just walked through. And just to the left or to the south, we can see this large opening and there's actually a road. This road was opened in the 19th century in honor of the German Emperor William II, who was the highest ranking guest who came to Jerusalem. The women in the Jaffa Gate Plaza it's where we were standing all these women with the white head coverings are members of the Druze sect and often Druze women cover their heads the religious Druze women cover their heads with these white white uh, scarves this, this road was filled in at one time there was a moat here a dry moat all of the ancient moats in Israel, in the land of Israel, were all dry moats, not the type of moats that you might have seen in the movies around castles with water in them. All of the ancient medieval moats around castles or fortresses in the land of Israel were all dry. And here you can see what has remained of the moat. But historically it was actually much wider into the middle of the uh, street. It was filled in with, with earth and debris. And here you can see in the street, you can see an indication here. This is the line of where the moat reached before it was filled in with earth. The moat is around the 
Tower of David fortress. This is one of the first modern hotels that was built in Jerusalem in the 19th century. Today it's called the Imperial Hotel. It belongs to the Greek Orthodox Church, as do many of the properties in Jerusalem. It is said that the Greek Orthodox Church are the second largest um, property owner after the state of Israel itself. We are at the Ibn We are at the Omar Ibn Al Khattab Square inside the Jaffa Gate. Here you can see the Swedish Christian Study Center. And next to it, you can see the Christian Information Center, which is the historic Austrian Post building. So notice above the Christian Information Center, there's the symbol of the Franciscan Monastery or Order. And next to that is a sign in German that tells of the history of the building that was originally built by the Austrian Post in the 19th century. And you can see the name of the square, Omar Ibn al Khattab who was the fourth caliph of Islam who conquered the city of Jerusalem from the Byzantine Christians. Here the Emmanuel Book Gift Shop and the Christ Church is the first Protestant presence in the city of Jerusalem that began in the 1840s. This road will lead us to the Zion Gate, the Western Wall, and the Dung Gate. So we can walk through the Armenian Quarter and the Jewish Quarter towards the Western Wall. Here you see the police station, which today is called Merkav David, the David area police station. But this is actually an Ottoman building. It's the Ottoman Kishle, which was the fort and the prison and the police compound in Ottoman times. building to our right is the Kishle, the Ottoman prison. It has been in use from the time it was built till this day as a police compound. And for many years it was also a prison. Here we can see 
the Armenian pottery and ceramics that are available in this nice store, Vix Art Studio. Authentic Armenian ceramics and pottery by Vic Lepijin Jan. Here is the Armenian Tavern Restaurant. It's like You can see the flag, the Armenian flag, at the Tavern Restaurant, which is right across the street from the Kishle which is along the wall to our right. Notice the cement work around the stones here with some drawings in the cement work. Yes, this road in the old city of Jerusalem is very narrow and these minibuses are the largest vehicles that are able to enter and they provide public transportation for residents of the Armenian and Jewish quarter. Here we have a sign remembering the Armenian genocide that occurred in the beginning of the 19th century. It is Armenian name, but now there are a lot of Jews from Iran, but it's like Yanni. Armenia. No, my favorite name is They have my name. Here we have another Armenian restaurant. And the Armenian Orthodox Patriarchate. You can see the sign engraved in the Armenian language. And we're going to turn into St. James Street. Now we are walking on St. James Street in the Armenian quarter of the old city of Jerusalem. Here the sign ahead of us says to the western wall. Don't you love the winding, narrow roads of the old city of Jerusalem? Here we're coming up to Arad Street. Again, we see a sign to the Western Wall. We see a directional sign. 
It tells us that we have the Jewish quarter ahead, the Western Wall, the Horva Synagogue, the Herodian Quarter, the Burnt House, Katru's House, the Old Yeshuv Museum, and the Cardo. But we're going to check out the Arad Street. And here is a welcome to the Jewish Quarter, reconstruct, restored in 1967 to 1983. This is St. James Street, the street that we came on. The Ararat Street is in the Armenian Quarter and named for a mountain that is in Armenia that is believed to be the resting place of the Ark, Noah's Ark. Here's a place for sale if you're interested in living in the old city of Jerusalem, Ararat 25. Rochov Hakinor. Hakinor means the violin. Many of the streets in the Jewish quarter of the old city of Jerusalem are named for musical instruments. Kashi Shi An Tlari, and you can see the Armenian ceramics. Although we've turned to the left, this is still Ararat Street, or Ararat Road. And here is Rehov HaMalach. HaMalach means the angel. We are still in the Armenian corner of the old city of Jerusalem. This is a gate to the St. James Armenian Monastery, which is not open to the public. The sign in Arabic and Hebrew says that this monastery is closed because of concern with the COVID pandemic. So hopefully soon this will open up again as Israel is opening up to tourism and there are many more tourists coming in. Now here, this is interesting. See the sign, El Malak HaMalach, the Angel Street, and half of the sign has been covered up by this arch that was built and added on after the sign. 
So part of the ceramic sign is hidden behind this newer arch. Now the arch is very pretty, but sadly it covers up the sign. I turned into the street in the Armenian quarter that I saw no name, no street name. And it's taking us into a courtyard that has no passage. Oh, this is also in Hebrew it says, Rehov al Malach, the angel street. So it's turned twisted and turned, but it's also considered part of the same street. Often in the old city of Jerusalem, we can walk on roads that turn 90 degrees, and then could be 90 degrees in the other direction, but the name of the street remains the same. We came down the street, and then we turned to the right, and it's still the same street name, but this also might be the same street name. We'll see when we get to the end if there's another sign for this street. Let me know if you are familiar with other cities around the world where they have streets with that twist and turn with the same names. Look at these stones. They seem to have been been through a lot. Now, this is the Jewish Quarter parking lot. We could have walked around the neighborhood and come out on that street there. Those buses, the mini mini buses that we saw passing through the arches in the Armenian quarter come along this road. And here we can see the buses waiting here at the bus stop. And if they continue down on this road, it will lead to the Western Wall. Now, we are turned north and we're walking towards the Jewish quarter. Shalom Lachem. There's a gift, so- gift shops waiting for you to come. This street is called Tiferet Yerushalayim, the beauty of Jerusalem. And here again we see directions to the Western Wall, the Chorva Synagogue, the Herodian Quarter, the Burnt House, the four Sephardic Synagogues, the Cardo, and the Rooftop Observation Point. This street is called Habad, which also means Chabad. Sometimes it's spelled with a C-H. More often it's spelled with a C-H. Chabad, sometimes two Bs. And see the symbol on this gate is the Greek Orthodox. The Greek Orthodox properties often will see this symbol.
This street is called Barakai, which is a name that is mentioned in the Mishnah. And here we have our friend Salomon Sauza, the same artist who painted in the Machane Yehuda Shuk. How do I know? I see his number autograph, and here I see the Salomon. We're on Chabad Street. In front of us, we can see the Chabad Lubavitch Synagogue, Samach Tzedek. And below us, we can see the archaeological reconstruction of the Cardo. This is the main street that goes north to south. We're on the southern end. And this is the Cardo, or part of the Cardo, from the Byzantine in the 4th, 6th. 4th, 5th, 6th century. And ahead of us is the Crusader Cardo, which is a higher level, meaning that the, in a much later time, in the 12th century, and the stores of the, of the Crusader Cardo are in use today. See the Chabad Hasidim, this synagogue built by Chabad Hasidim in 1858 was named for their spiritual leader, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson of Rabavich, author of the Tzemach Tzedek. The second floor is named for a benefactor whose name was Eliyahu David Sasson, Sasun of Bombay. During the War of Independence in 1948, the building was in the very center of the fighting. He had remained unharmed. Chabad Hasidim resumed prayer and study here in 1967. Here is a kosher Korean restaurant, the old house. For those of you who are visiting the old city of Jerusalem and wish to eat Asian Korean food, that is kosher, by the way. We'll walk over to the Syriac convent.
and we are back on Arat Street in the Syriac convent. Here is the Syrian, a Syrian convent that according to the Syrian Orthodox Church, St. Mark's convent is in their tradition, the upper room. According to other traditions, the upper room, according to the Catholic tradition, the upper room is on Mount Zion above David's tomb. And this is also according to their tradition, the house of St. Mark, the first church in Christianity. Ahead of us, you can see on the left side is the Earl Chaim Street. So we have a league that competition and he's really bad. He's really bad. And on the right side is St. James Street. We were here before and now we're walking back in the direction we came from. So if you recognize the building to our left, it is the Kishle, the Turkish prison that we passed by earlier. We're coming back the other direction. We were in uh, the Armenian quarter and in the Jewish quarter. And now we are walking towards the Jaffa Gate. And of course, we'll pass by 
the Tower of David, fortress and museum. Note that the cars, you need a special permit to get into the gates of the old city of Jerusalem. Only residents and uh, special permits are allowed to enter with their cars on this road. And each of the gates that has passage for cars is, are only for people who live in that same neighborhood. So here you have the Armenian neighborhood and the Jewish neighborhood. And only residents of these neighborhoods are allowed. And of course, uh, the clergy who belong to the different churches that are dotted around in these different areas. So regular resident, regular people who are not residents of this neighborhood cannot enter here. Hey, these are my friends. These are the, the, the best tour guides in Israel. Hello. David is the best tour guide. <laughs> we are the second best. Asakha Mati. Here we see the Pacha Hotel, which was the Andorsky. It was the first Jewish hotel in the city of Jerusalem up until the mid and uh, 19th century. All of Jerusalem was inside the Ottoman walls. And only in the 1860s did a uh, Jewish builders start building outside of the old city of Jerusalem. That's it, we're back at the Jaffa Gate. Send in your comments in the silent comment section, share this with your friends, and come back for more tours in Jerusalem and throughout the land of Israel.